Good day, everyone. Welcome to Heart and Soul Fireside Chat, where it is our goal to bring you inspiring and empowering conversation along with sharing practical tools to help you live an overcoming and joy-filled life. I am Marla Wall, and with me today, again, and will always be probably, <laughs> at least most of the time, right. my co-host, Alyssa Fleming. So we want to thank you for tuning in and uh, joining us today. And listen, while you're listening, make some notes in the comments, make some comments and let us know if you are appreciating, if, if these are helping you in any way, speaking to you, give us a thumbs up, share the videos with your friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let them know about Heart and Soul Fire Chat because we really want to just really share and be a blessing to you and to others. I mean, just talk about the things that women need to discuss mm -hmm. woman to woman and not just stay at that level of just talking, but being able to overcome some of our challenges that we face. So today we're just gonna jump right in and today our topic is gonna be about soul ties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I don't know if everybody is aware what a soul tie is, but I can tell you probably everybody has functioned within one mm -hmm. at some point in time. So first I'm gonna uh, just talk about and, and not just me, but let's talk about what soul ties are. Mm -hmm. What's a soul tie to you, Alyssa? Um, good question. So if I want to, if I'm thinking about soul ties, I'm thinking of, um, the word tie in that. Mm -hmm. So it is something that has tied me up, has me entangled, um, wrapped up, tied up tangled up as the song used mm -hmm, to say mm -hmm. um back in the day in something that is detrimental to my soul mm -hmm. to my spirit mm -hmm. to my being mm -hmm. so that's what i think of and uh, yes that's basically because i think of that word tie as well but you think about soul so what is your soul your mind, your will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. And so as you talked about something being tied up, wrapped up, tangled up, mm -hmm. you're tangling up your mind, your will, right. and your emotions. And so how do soul ties begin? Mm -hmm. Now, oftentimes, as we've talked about it, and, and I've heard other people discuss it, it tends to be dealing more in the area of sex, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Premarital or outside of marriage sex. <clears throat> and so what happens is, um, and even, and, and I don't even want to use it just in the, in that, in that negative term. So, you know, when husbands and wives get married, right. And they, did you realize that a marriage isn't really covenanted until they consummate the marriage? Uh, yes, I did hear that. So until they have sex in order to consummate, bring that covenant together. Okay. So there is then that tie that binds them together. Right. Okay. Because people actually can get divorced if they've never consummated. They'll ask, has this been? Right. That's true. Has it been consummated? That yes. is so true. <laughs> yes. And so... There is the tie. You're tying your mind, your will, and emotions. What did the scripture say? The two become one. Mm -hmm. So a soul tie isn't necessarily to be have been a negative thing, mm -hmm. right? So in the in the concept of marriage and the way God set it up, husband and wife, two becoming one. Mm -hmm. And so you're tying your will, your mind, your thoughts, your emotions together and functioning in this relationship, this covenantal relationship. But what often happen, happens is that a lot of people are having uh, premarital or outside of marriage, the covenant of marriage sex, and they are tying their souls to that individual. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. so a soul tie in, in that sense is where you have linked your soul with mm -hmm. that individual, right? And so oftentimes, you know, we talked about in some of our earlier uh, video content about desperation mm -hmm. and insecurity. And so here it is that we're giving ourselves these wifely benefits to, <laughs> I love the way that you gave that term, boyfriends. <laughs> to boyfriends or those who are actually unworthy of, of, 
our intimacy, mm -hmm. right? But we're right. giving, so we're giving ourselves to them mm -hmm. and we're tying our soul to that individual. Mm -hmm. And so then what happens oftentimes? <laughs> the relationship ends, right? And so it ends and we think, okay, it's over and done with. But what do some men do? <laughs> some men, when they're done, they jump right into another relationship. They cool. So but men can have soul ties too, but they do this to kind of override, you know, hey, I'm gone because, you know, men, it's about the pursuit and the conquering. Mm -hmm. And, if you know, I'll conquer someone else <laughs> and move on. Some women tend to try to do the same, but what they don't realize, even the men, is that they are still tied mm -hmm. to that individual. Mm hmm their souls are still tied to that individual. It's like, and then you see them years down the road, right? And I'm, what did I look like? Did I? <laughs> well, you see oh, him down the street. Uh, uh, yep, yep, because, because, I was just standing here. yep, because <laughs> that soul tie is still in operation. <laughs> and so people don't realize that when we are entering into those relationships and not even just sex, but anything intimate, mm -hmm. right? You can, people fantasize mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about, you know, oh, you know, he was so good. Oh, I wonder what it'd be like, you know, or mm -hmm. he does, oh, you know, I can see, you know. And so you're even in that building a tie to that individual. So as we discuss that, what do you think would be an impact of having a soul tie? <laughs> One, because <laughs> there's a lot. Um, well, there there will be, there could be, oftentimes in my case, mm -hmm. there was um, a heightened desperation. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I got to get this guy back. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I got to. I got to go back. It wasn't as bad as I think mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not that bad. Such I can, a rational. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm feeling that I'm feeling like something is breaking. Something is missing. Mm -hmm. Something, it, there's a void. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, as unhealthy as the relationships might have been, it still deceptively filled this mm -hmm. this void it kept me from having to focus on mm -hmm. what the realities really were the mm -hmm. truth is that the insecurity is mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. there's a level of desperation and all of this is tied into something that stems from childhood mm -hmm. and so um so i i as you say begin to rationalize yeah it's not that bad mm -hmm. we can make it mm -hmm. we can this time it's gonna be different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and then no. <laughs> On, no. on top of that, you know, also what, even in, in that uh, particular sense where you want to rationalize and mm -hmm. remain in that situation, many women or some women will walk away, you know, and say, okay, I'm good. And, and I'll walk away. But again, we talked earlier about the suppressing mm -hmm. of the pain and those kind of things that come in and we experience in our lives. And so when we have a tie with someone, Right. So I've given a piece of myself mm -hmm. to them and they've given a piece of themselves to me. Mm -hmm. So now we break, but the soul tie remains. And so now I've moved on to be with whomever mm -hmm. and he moved on to be with whomever, but he is now in the relationship I have with the new person mm -hmm. because I'm still tied to that individual and some of their will and their mind mm -hmm. and their emotions are tied up in me right. and I'm operating from those types of thoughts that he had and vice versa. Right. You know, and oftentimes you hear men say, Hey, I'm not him. You know, they try to say, I'm not him, but you brought that baggage in. But what it is, is it's, it's part of that soul tie that comes in and vice versa. Right. So in other words, there's a piece of him still in me Absolutely. and there's a piece of me still in him. Absolutely. So I've come into this new relationship, but I've come, I haven't come alone. Correct. I got this ex and yes. that ex yeah. and mm -hmm. this ex mm -hmm. and we all together. Yes. And you're missing parts of yourself. Exactly. Ooh. Ooh. Because you gave them to him some to him and some to that guy five years ago. 
very good. And so you're trying to figure out, so here it is. Now you're in a relationship with the one that the Lord has sent to you. <laughs> and y'all can't figure out what the heck is happening here because we have all these other people in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And we have pieces of ourselves that are not even here. Correct. All missing. Right. Missing voids and empties. And so, you know, and, and I know my daughters and, and I know young women that you have spoken to, we try to tell them, please don't get involved in these relationships. Please don't leave him and go with him. Or if you do take some time, time. to get some healing in between, because what you don't realize is that you are now broken, right? You have left some of yourself and we need to be able to get that piece back. Right. So in that concept, how would you, what would you tell someone, a young lady, how does she get a, that piece back? Um, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm thinking obviously along the lines of my own testimony, my own story. Um, for me, and I, and I have to reflect cause I, I don't think it was as clear. Okay. I'm going to get a piece right, of myself right, back. Right, right, right. You know, Cause you don't even know what's missing. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so it, it, it was like in that, um, in the previous episodes that we talked, talked about it was that journey as I traveled along mm -hmm. um the journey to becoming whole getting the the counseling mm -hmm. um getting the help that I needed mm -hmm. then things became mm -hmm. more clear mm -hmm. and so for for me when those things became clear I had to apologize to myself mm -hmm. I did not only did I have to apologize to God but I had to apologize to myself tell me what that looked like um just what it sounds like. I, I literally had to say, Alyssa, you messed yourself up mm -hmm. um, by settling for this thing that you knew wasn't right mm -hmm. or by getting yourself involved with someone that you already knew wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to supposed to, well, it was a relationship that wasn't ever supposed to happen mm -hmm. by compromising, by not um, taking the time to explore who you are mm -hmm. and who you were intended to be by God, mm -hmm. you have shortchanged yourself. And in shortchanging yourself, you have, a, you have allowed paradigms and, and expectations and desires mm -hmm. that are not really yours mm -hmm. to influence mm -hmm. you. Sort of like the runaway bride with it, Julia oh. Roberts. Yeah, 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 she yeah, kept yeah. getting into these real. I love movies. I, I just, I can. She learn does movies. <laughs> and just she kept getting in relationship after relationship, and whatever it kind of eggs he liked, then she liked that, mm -hmm. and then the next when that was over, she would run away, wouldn't get married. The next relationship, if he liked the omelet, oh, I like an omelet too. Mm -hmm. Then she would run away at the altar if she met. Oh, I like Fridays. I like Fridays too. And I, and Richard Gear was just like, you don't even know what, what you, you like. <laughs> you don't even know who you. Because mm -hmm. you keep giving pieces of yourself to these individuals and you're taking pieces of them and making your own puzzle of yourself, right. which is what you said was so key is taking the time to find out who you are. Exactly. Because if you don't know who you are, you won't, if you don't know what your puzzle looks like, you can't tell when that wrong piece is, is trying to get into your puzzle. Exactly. No, no, that doesn't belong there. That's a, a circle and I have a square that's right here in this piece. Get rid of that. Right. That's, reject that because it doesn't fit within my puzzle. But we're taking a piece from that puzzle, piece from this puzzle, a piece from over there. And then we're trying to make something and imagine what that looks like if you're trying to make your life, that puzzle, based on everybody else's puzzle. Right. It's, can you imagine the distortion? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's what's happening in our souls. Mm -hmm. We are being tied up in our souls because we won't take the time to find out who we are. And how do you take that? How, what would you say to someone? How do you take the time to begin to know who you are? Um, Honestly, it took me a long time. I literally had that Julia Roberts mm -hmm. 
incident. I really did, in all honesty. I, I literally sat there and I remember this so clearly. It was on a weekend and I was in, um, I was here in Rochester and I literally sat there and I said to myself, I said, Alyssa, you don't even know why you like the things that you like. Mm -hmm. Had you not met him, would you have even liked this? Mm -hmm. Had had you not been with him all of these years, would you have even explored that? Mm -hmm. What what? And I sat there. I'm like, what 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 do I like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? What do I like and why do I like what mm -hmm. I like? What, mm -hmm. Why is this even here? Mm -hmm. How did this become a part of me? Is this genuinely me mm -hmm. or is this do, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. is, I don't, mm -hmm. I, I did. I had to sit there and ask myself that question. And when I asked myself that question, then I had to commit to finding out the answers. And that is so key. And so I love that you said that because we're talking about practical tools here. How do you find out who you are? You have to commit to the process. Mm -hmm. You have to love yourself enough to say, I'm going to find out who I am. Who what have I been created to be? What do I like? What don't I like? Mm -hmm. You know, what what are deal breakers for me? Mm -hmm. What are things that I can push aside? But we have to know those things for ourselves. And it's a journey, right? Even coming into, as you talked about it, it being a journey. Mm -hmm. I think it's still a journey, even for me, as I process some of the things that, you know, as being a, a wife mm -hmm. and being a mom, mm -hmm. you know, it's okay. They want to do that. Oh, do, well, wait, now is that what I want to do? Mm -hmm. You know, there are things they're going to, I'm going to compromise because we're in this relationship and we're building something together. My husband and I, there are times I have to be able to start, what is it that is going to make me happy? Mm -hmm. I need some time by myself. Mm -hmm. I need to go off and go to the grocery store by myself. I was leaving to go to the grocery store yesterday and my husband said, is Michaela coming with you? I said emphatically, no. <laughs> <laughs> she, she is not. And when I got home, he was like, is everything okay? I was like, yes, because normally because Michaela wants to come, I let Michaela come. And, you know, I said, you know, I don't feel like having any conversation today. Mm -hmm. I want to go into the store, get what I need. I want to be able to just take my time, mm -hmm. think about my own thoughts and not be filled with someone else's thoughts. And it's okay to have those times right. and moments for myself. Right. But I had to know what I like mm -hmm. what's going to refresh me mm -hmm. what's going to make me happy and not in the sense of of, of um, selfishness mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you can't be selfish when you're in relationship with others right. period you know if you want a healthy relationship right. but you you ha in order to have a healthy relationship you have to know your own boundaries exactly you do and many women don't know their boundaries my husband tells me all the time, he said, you don't have any problem with your boundaries. No, I don't. Because I have learned that if you allow, people will consistently take your time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They will consistently be in a need, in a place of need of your time and attention, right? right. Yeah, I don't even tell my kids when I'm gonna stay home from, from work. No. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden, they'll I'll get a call, oh, you know, Caleb doesn't feel well. No, he was fine. <laughs> he was fine. He knew mom was gonna be home. And so he said, oh, you know, with that little bubble of gas right there, I take that, so I'm gonna call so I can go home early. Mom's gonna pick me up. I don't even do that anymore because I learned right. from having kids, 34 <laughs> years of having children, that no, don't tell people when you're not going, when you're taking a day off right. because they'll come, they'll come looking for you. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to know your boundaries right. and knowing your boundaries will help you so that you don't get in relationships where you are uh, tying up your soul to people who don't mean you any good right where you're giving yourself to people and somehow you're gonna have to go back 
and get that. And so one of the ways that you talked about, which is a very practical way, is you apologize. You you ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You told the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry for entering that relationship with that individual. And hey, Alyssa, I'm sorry for not listening to the Lord and then my own self to say, right. hey, this doesn't feel good or right for me. So I'm going to not enter this relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's a really great, just simple, practical tool and acknowledging mm -hmm. of being able to see I was wrong for doing that. And even in that concept, you may say, how does that get your soul back? It, because it's such a spiritual thing and our soul is, it's mind, will, and emotion. You can't touch it. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a spiritual, um, reality along with our spirit itself of in that place of just that simple understanding of I was wrong. Lord, I want this piece of me back. Right. And he will restore it to you because that's what he says. He says he restores our soul. He is the restorer mm -hmm. of souls. And so when we feel like we are broken and we maybe entered all these relationships and we have these soul ties and we try to figure out how do I get free of this stuff so that I can be me, I can see who I am. All you have to do really is just go to the Lord, the restorer of souls mm -hmm. and ask him, God, please restore my soul. And it's really just that simple. It really is. All you have to do is believe and then receive it. Mm -hmm. And know that at that moment of your belief mm -hmm. and prayer that you are now back, he has remembered, he has put those those members of yourself, they are be, you are being remembered. You're getting those pieces mm -hmm. back in your soul so that you can be whole and move forward and be the wonderful woman that you have been created to be. And so I was going to ask you about the steps, but I think that's one of the biggest things that sticks out to me is just that simple going to God mm -hmm. in faith, mm -hmm. asking him to restore your soul and then believing you have it. And then also talking with someone who can help you with changing your mindset, your behaviors, right. your thoughts, get tools to how do I find out who I am? Mm -hmm. How do I find out what I like about myself. And all of that is really internal. Yes, it is. It absolutely is. You know, is. it's internal. If you take the time to quiet yourself and get rid of those other noises mm -hmm. that have told you what you are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and who you are, but really sit back and think, what is it that makes me happy? What is it that brings a smile to my face that I get joy mm -hmm. about, that, that excites me? And those are some of the things that you begin to see. This is who I am. Right. Right. And then also recognizing the things that you don't like. Mm -hmm. I, wait, I'm not feeling this right now. Why mm -hmm. am I not feeling this? Right. Oh, I don't like this. Why don't I like this? Mm -hmm. And you may not necessarily necessarily be able to say, I don't like it for A, B, and C, mm -hmm. but you do recognize that mm -hmm. you don't like it. Mm -hmm. And if this is something that you don't like and it's, and, and it's, I mean, you don't have to compromise in that right. is what I want to say. You don't have to compromise mm -hmm. in what you, in what you like and what you don't like. Mm -hmm. um, as you go through this journey of discovering who you are, mm -hmm. you really don't have to compromise. Mm -hmm. And what Marla said is absolutely true. It's, it is as simple as going to God just as you are. Mm -hmm. I went to God and I went to him raw. Mm -hmm. You know, I was very honest. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just like, I don't like any of this life that I've had to live. Mm -hmm. And if you and I are going to make it, then I'm going to need you in a way that I've never experienced mm -hmm. you before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then my portion is, my responsibility is to allow him to show himself. Yes. yes. So I need to do my part. Mm -hmm. He does his part. We do our part. Mm -hmm. We have to be committed for our healing. Yes. Yes. And on that, we are going to wrap up with that final uh, word that you just said. We have to be committed to our healing. 
He will be with us. He will walk right with us. But we have to maintain that commitment. Mm -hmm. And that is powerful. And a simple phrase that I'm going to keep for myself. So ladies, be committed to your healing and walk in courage and confidence. God bless you. And until next time, take care.